I think we're live. Brian. Hey, everybody. Good day, sir. Good day to you. That's right. So I want to I want to get on my high horse a little bit today. Uh oh. Are you ready for some high horse? I'm always ready for a high horse. That's right. That's right. This horse. So, um, so I want to talk a little bit about Bizop. I want to talk a little bit mm. about um, MMO. Make money online. Bizop. Sometimes when I ask people what kind of email list they want to build, they say affiliate marketing. I'm like, no, dude, you're confused. So the BizOp world's big, first of all. It's a big world. And it's and I've got I've got a problem with it. And I've always had a problem with it. And I'm gonna tell you why right now. So you guys can see in the description, I, I, I wrote some things. I've been talking to a lot of folks, Brian, uh, who've been inquiring about our email empire program. And uh, as I've been talking to people, pe the question has come up uh, of, dude, I really want to build an email list the right way because I did it the wrong way in the past. And it really kind of sucked. It really screwed everything up. And here's the pattern that I'm seeing. And I've been seeing this, honestly, for almost 20 years, but it's recently resurfaced in my experience, which is so often when people are learning email marketing or list building or lead generation, right? We're like, okay, I need to buy some leads. I need to get some leads and then I need to convert them. And that's what list building is, is buying leads buying traffic, turning them into leads and converting those leads, right? That's my deal. Mm -hmm. And often when people learn this, they spend several thousand dollars to um, get the templates and the processes and the systems from their teacher. And their teacher is often selling how to make money online. That's Their, their teacher is a teacher of how to make money on the internet. So it makes sense that they're going to give you templates about how to make money on the internet. Here's the problem. You don't know how to make money on the internet. That's why you're seeking a teacher. And so often, and I'm not going to name any names, but I can tell you that two of the names that have come up in the last 48 hours and calls that I've done are people in the industry that aside from this one issue, I know I like, I respect, and I've promoted in the past. And so it makes me feel a little weird to talk about this, but the issue is people are like, oh, I'm going to give you $5,000. I'm going to give you $10,000 as my guru. And you're going to give me all your templates. You're going to clone all your systems and you're going to, you're going to give me all your, your sources of traffic and, or you're going to even give me free leads automatically populated in my autoresponder account in some cases, this kind of stuff. And, and then I'm going to be able to all, use all your templates, copy and paste, make money, baby. Copy and paste, make money, right? No, wrong. And here's why. Your heart, that's why. You don't even believe in yourself yet. And the problem comes in when you're trying to bond and connect and build uh, a trust, and build a deep and meaningful relationship between you and your list that will last for years. If you're trying to like run a fly by night churn and burn business, okay, but you gotta be super skilled to do that. You're not trying to do that. You're trying to build a real business that's gonna make money over the long haul. And for that, you need trust, you need connection and you need long-term relationships as well as short-term income. And so often I find people spend all this money to create something where they don't feel comfortable getting on camera, where they don't feel comfortable writing emails or blog posts or creating podcast episodes or content for their list to either drive traffic. So content for a list could be an organic YouTube video, or it could be a YouTube ad that you then put money into. Either way, it's still content, right? They're not comfortable getting on camera or creating the content because they know they don't know what they're talking about. 
you as a student know you don't know what you're talking about because you're just learning marketing. And so the issue becomes more often than not that you're stuck in a situation where you want the easy way out. You want the fastest path to cash and the fastest path to cash is to promote your guru's product and service that you just gave them five or 10 grand in order to learn their system. But they're like, but you don't have to come up with your own product or service. You can just promote mine as an affiliate and earn 50%. And that sounds really good, but it's only really good if you're already a marketing guru with the trust, respect, admiration, and connection with your list. And because you feel incongruent and inauthentic in your own communication, your own messaging, because you know you're full of crap and you're just blowing smoke and you're just regurgitating a bunch of stuff that other people said that you don't even believe in yet because you're not making any money yet. Ugh! So <laughs> this is a very frustrating situation. Oh, I'm going to take a breath. Brian, have you encountered yeah. this? And what's your experience of it? And you know, the issue with that is it just adds to like more junk and spam and crap on the internet. Because like you said, if you really had like the knowledge, the passion or the expertise, you could maybe put out a piece of content, whether it's a video or an email or an article that's actually useful and actually helps people. But because you don't lack that knowledge or experience, but you're looking for like the quick cash to promote this latest fizz op, you're just going to bother people with like spam junk. And it's just like valueless noise. <laughs> right? It is. It really is. And we're going to give you a way out here. Okay. I'm going to rant first, but then we're going to get to something good here in a moment, which is, so the issue though, guys, is when you're trying to pretend to be someone that you're not. Okay. When you're trying to be a leader, a guide, a guru, a mentor, a teacher to these people, but you lack the skills and confidence to do the thing with any degree of certainty or expertise yourself. You cannot guide someone if you don't know what the heck you're doing. You're going to lead them down the path of destruction. You don't even know where you're going. Okay. Now, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't do affiliate marketing. What it means is that you need to focus on the group of people that you are most qualified to help. And you have the greatest ability to help based on your life and your life experience that's unique to you. That's where you begin. You need to begin on, on really getting clear. And this is like, so this is the difference between playing the short game and the long game with your business. And so do you want the hope of a quick hit of cash in the next 90 days just so you can pay your bills? Or do you want a business that's going to pay you for the next two decades? I don't work with short-term thinkers. I only work with long-term thinkers. So if you're, if you're in it for the long haul and you actually want to build a business that will stand the test of time, then I, then this might resonate with you. If you're just looking for a quick hit, then, you know, you probably won't like what I'm about to say. So it's, it's um, a situation where, you actually have to decide and dedicate yourself to helping a group of people for a long time as and, and treat them as if they're your community. They're the people you live with. They're the people you see at church. They're the people that you bump into in the grocery store. Like they're your people and you're dedicated to serving them as a business owner and as a list builder, as a list creator, you are, you are, you are, bringing a community of people that already exist together under your wing to lead them to a better place in their life. That's your role. You're the leader and you need to start acting like one. And so the first step is you really need to get clear on who it is that you're serving. And then you need to get clear on what are the problems that you're best suited to help them solve. 
That's where it all begins. And when you start there and then you learn marketing in order to help to find more of your people and get clearer with your message, now it becomes clear when it's time to learn a new traffic source or when it's time to improve your copywriting skills and abilities or when it's time to learn how to run paid ads or when it's time to learn how to build a funnel or when it's time to learn how to do public speaking or when it's time to learn how to do high ticket sales or when it's time to learn how to do Google ads or when it's time to learn how to get good at TikTok or when it's time to learn how to get good at um, team building. And these are all skills that you're gonna have to learn, sorry, um, over the course of the next few decades in your business, <laughs> right? Um, so I can see that um, for some reason, this is not a particularly popular live stream, Brian. <laughs> As far as engagement or views, it's just a it, we're we're just um, we have I think we have one heart, which is really sweet, and zero viewers. I feel so heard right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but well, um, actually, I was like two two things worth discussing. There is one. Um, so I know a lot of people they they don't do things like this because sometimes or like, especially when you're just getting started is there's no audience. Right. Uh, and whether you're doing live streams, you're doing videos on, on YouTube or wherever they are. Uh, the reality is, is most of the views are going to happen after the fact. Yeah. Right. So, and, and you're doing it not just for like now in the moment, but you're doing it for like residual, what happens afterwards. That's point but number not, one. Yeah. Well, I want to add on to that though. Right. Which is yeah. not only are you doing it to create content or videos that will be out there and people can watch in the future and or that you can repurpose for other cool things in the future. But the reality is every time you write a blog post, every time you record a podcast, every time you do a Facebook live or, or, or a live stream on YouTube, every single time you create something of value for your people, you get better. Yep. It's just like working out. You get more skilled at your craft. You become more excellent. If you want to learn how to make more money, you got to practice making more money every day. You got to get better. You got you to gotta sharpen the sword, baby. Like that's the deal. All right. Point number one. I agree with you, Brian. What's point number two? There was a point number two. Oh, come on. You have this. What's point number two? <laughs> I, forgot, I forgot what it oh, was. I, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't interrupt you. I shouldn't interrupt you. Oh, time. Oh, timing. So it is at the time we're recording this or doing it live. I, it is Wednesday, December 21st. And a lot of people are doing Christmas shopping. Timing. Yeah, these are all factors. And sometimes... Or you just don't know what is or isn't going to take and or where, you know, sometimes it's like algorithm weirdness. Um, yeah. So there, there's a lot to be said about creating content every day. You know, Brian, one of the things that I've been rattling around in my head, but I haven't talked to you about um, is this program that I created several years ago, like six years mm -hmm. ago called 99 days. And 99 days is a Facebook group and it's geared toward getting people live streaming every day for 99 days. The hardest, one of, one of the most challenging tasks that um, my students are um, forced to master and undertake is daily live streaming. Uh, my, my email marketing and list building students all have to create content every day um, through live streaming unless they're such a great writer and such a prolific writer that they can do it. They can do a better job in writing, in which case I'll allow that. But daily live streaming and getting good at creating content every day and getting the discipline of creating content every day is one of the key factors that differentiates successful long-term information marketers from failures is level of consistent prolificness. Are you, and it doesn't, 
it's not just measured by, oh, does that mean every successful information marketer live streams every day? No, that's not what that means. What it means is um, every successful long-term information marketer has a system in place in their business to consistently create new content and new products and new offers. Prolific creation of information products, whether they be free or paid or part of a marketing system, uh, whether they're on the free part of the marketing system or the paid part of the marketing system. These days, most of them go on camera. Some of them refuse to go on camera and have a team in place to create content where someone else goes on camera or they create fully animated videos and they have the bankroll to do that. Um, and are consistently creating new products and new offers that they're and, and new funnels that they're putting out there. And that requires recording. Okay. It requires getting on camera and recording or writing sales letters. Right. And so if you're a one man or a one woman show and you don't have a team of copywriters and video producers, then guess whose responsibility it is to make sure that you get great stuff out there on a regular basis. You. And what's the best way to do it? Daily. Just like brushing and flossing your teeth. Just like eating. Just like taking a shower, I hope, is you want to be taking care of yourself every day. You want to be taking care of your business every day. And part of that is creating daily content consistently. Um, so 99 days, I've been thinking about opening it back up. I'd have to like slap together a sales page and whatever, but I was thinking about charging $99 for 99 days. And for 99 days, they get an email and a video lesson on what to do that day for their live stream. And so it basically trains people how to live stream. And what I was thinking about doing was changing it. I was thinking about changing the program to where we teach the co-host model as part of the 99 days process, because I think it's, yeah. I think really think it's so much easier to have a co-host than to be going out of it alone for most. Some people are great at going out of it alone. And that's great. But a lot of people, um, I think having one or two co-hosts would really be the thing. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Brian, wh um, what are your thoughts? You've coached a lot of people on email marketing and list building in different capacities as, as, as internet entrepreneurs over the years in a few, with a few different businesses and companies, right? You, there was your own business mm -hmm. um, where you taught list building with List Profit Academy. There was your work with Overcome Everything. There's extended... Um, and I believe continual work with the Harrison brothers, right? Yep. And um, I'm curious about when you run into people that are wanting to go into the make money online niche or the biz op niche and they don't have a skill to teach that niche already, right? They, they want to go into the niche, but they don't have any ex experience teaching anything of value in that niche, right? They're, they're brand new to the niche and they're like, well, clearly I'm going to make money online because that's where the money is. That's what all the gurus do. That's what I'm going to do too. Do you often run into those people and do you ever find them successful at that? I, I don't often run into them. I, uh, as much with the companies I work with now, I did run into a lot of it in the past with other companies. And I think that's, that's just the nature of the companies, how they market, how they promote and who they're attracting. But yeah, ultimately though, what I find though, is that um, if I'm working with someone who is either an expert or they have a passion or they're really mission driven and they have a message that they want to get out there um, or they just want to monetize their, their knowledge or their passion in some way. 
they're much more likely to be successful. Yeah. Because it, what, it, what they're trying, what they're trying to learn is, you know, legitimate ways and tools and means to do that. Uh, and because it's their, their passion, they're willing to put in the work when it gets hard and not give up versus someone who is just, Oh, well, I just want to make money. And I heard about this make money program. Well, sooner or later you find out it either doesn't work or you're not willing to put in the work to make it work and you just give up. And I think a lot of that has to do with, because you're not really passionate about it to begin with. You're just trying yeah, to who make cares other money. than, other than making money to pay off your debt. Who gives a crap? Nobody, right. including you, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's so not the way to go. So guys, like, um, I almost ne like if someone tells me they're going into the biz op or that, or that make money online space and they don't have a skill, like they're, they, they don't know how to drive traffic. They aren't good at viral marketing. They aren't a copywriter. They aren't some sort of, they didn't ar architect some sort of super mega ninja high converting brand new type of funnel that they want to teach the world about. You know, they, 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 they don't own a software as a service, you know, like they, they don't have anything. They just want to, they just want to go into biz op. I just want to, you know, like run traffic, run affiliate offers and go into biz op. Like so few people are successful if that's where you start. What ends up happening is the people that are successful usually didn't start in biz op. The people that are successful usually started in somewhere that they were passionate and worked their butt off until they could replace the income from their job doing this new thing and they learn marketing. And what happens is a small percentage of the people that learn marketing and are now business owners and they, they are, are selling an ebook online on veganism or they're selling a video course on how to improve your relationships or they're selling a, um, a coaching program on uh, 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 paleo eating for weight loss and whatever, you know, they're doing their thing. And um, hypnotherapist who's like helping people with stress management, right? Um, a small percentage of those people fall in love with marketing. And that's what happened to me. I fell in love with marketing, but that was after I failed at seven businesses and never read a good marketing book. I fell in love with direct response marketing when I learned about it, applied it to my business, it worked. And then I got interested in making my business work better and, 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 and getting into the art of marketing, the creative, the innovative, the unusual, the outside of the box ways that I could start thinking about a marketing process after I learned how it worked functionally. And my brain, my innovator brain, my engineer brain, my creative brain loves that part way more than I love doing the same old, same old hypnosis sessions, which is how I originally got into marketing is I was trying to figure out how to sell hypnosis CDs online and like doing the same hypnosis session a thousand different times for a thousand different people. is just like, you know, it makes my mind want to just like do backflips and melt out my ears, you know? So the, um, some people fall in love with marketing and if you fall in love with marketing and then you d decide you're going to develop your skills as a marketer, as an entrepreneur, eventually you have a breakthrough and you start training and teaching other people your special skill. Maybe they're people in your company, maybe they're friends and family. For me, that was list building, right? And I started sharing that with other people and they were met with success and, and that showed me, okay, Maybe I should keep teaching this. And so I never entered the make money online space. I never entered the biz op space. I wanted to like, I started selling hypnosis stuff. And then I did a big interview series with people about email marketing and list building because I wanted to learn how to do it. And that led me to fall in love with marketing, which is a fine path, but you don't want to put the cart before the horse. You don't want to pretend that you're an expert guru and marketer when you know you're full of crap. That's not the path of success. That's the path of failure. Like, don't do that, please. Um, 
I remember a good friend. I'm going to give you an example of someone who is wildly successful with this. Um, uh, he's my friend, Corey Lewis. And Corey, back in the day, was a student of mine. And Corey was working in a cell phone store. And he was selling cell phones. And he joined my program for list building. And I remember talking to him about what he was going to build a list around. And he said that he was going to build a list around and, and that he had an ebook that he wrote called Dongle Secrets. And I was like, what's a dongle, dude? Like, what are you even talking about? And it was, uh, he was, it, he, he taught people how to um, hack cell phones, old school, okay, with dongles, with these like different physical attachments that you could use in order to like get cell phones to do all sorts of stuff that they, they, they weren't supposed to do. Right. Um, and he was all nerdy about, about the cell phone stuff. And that was his first online business is he had a, he had an opt-in page and he was building a list and selling an ebook called dongle secrets. And lo and behold, his technical mechanical mind kicked in as he was building his business. And he started seeing how funnels worked and how follow-up sequences worked and how email deliverability worked. And he started getting really good at running the numbers on his business and the traffic and the percentages. And like, he's really good at some of the fine details in a way that I'm not. And um, this guy has built a wildly successful business in the biz op space over the years because he learned the mechanism and the system and his brain couldn't stop thinking about it. And then he created the thing that he was obsessed with. That is a work of art, ladies and gentlemen. That is the way to do it. But you don't want to start just chasing the dollar and hoping that someday you're going to feel worthy of it because you never will unless you get good at the skills that you're teaching. Right? So like... If you want to learn how to get good at selling from stage like public speaking and selling at the end, then you need to go and practice that a lot. But if you're not good at it and you don't have a product or service that you can sell with certainty, then a way to do that is to get trained and then to get a job selling somebody else's product or service that you do believe in, to hone your skills as a public speaker. And then in a few years, maybe you'll develop your own public speaking system, right? Like, so the lesson here really is start with what means something to you. Forget the internet. Like, forget the internet. Forget internet marketing. Like, what about your actual life? <laughs> right? What do you, if the internet was unplugged tomorrow and you had to start a business, what would it be? You know, like. What would it be? What do you think, Brian? If like if we woke up tomorrow morning and literally the internet was unplugged for all of us. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think you would do? That's the first of all, that's a very scary thought. <laughs> because and, and it's amazing. One thing I always comment on is like my my living wholly depends upon the internet. On the flip side, my mother doesn't even own a computer or have an email address. I mean, it's, it's absolutely nuts. And that's just one generation. Right. Um, I don't know if I really put much thought into that because it's a well, scary dude, You're thought. about to become a lawyer. Come on. Yeah. I, could, like, I guess I could do like that six thing. months, you're going to be a lawyer. Like, you know, I mean, yeah. you're already on track. You're good. But I, 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 but at this very moment, I don't know what I would do. Okay. What I, I say what I would want to do is become a local marketing consultant, but I don't want to do that because like the businesses are just too small and myopic and they're thinking, around here. I don't find that I like talking about marketing very much with local business owners because they're just, their, their heads are largely stuck up their ass um, yeah. in terms of thinking outside of their, you know, little traditional way of being. 
Um, I, the reality is what I would probably do is open up a hypnotherapy practice. That would, that's the first thing that I would do. I, I'm really good at it. I know what I'm doing and you know, like I, I could do local marketing for that and I know I could make it work um, without a shadow of a doubt. And then I guess what I would probably do is if the internet stopped working, I I think that the answer would be public speaking, honestly. I, I think that yeah, um, that I'm, I'm good at speaking. I'm good at speaking from stage. I know how to sell. It's not that different from webinars. Uh, public speaking is direct response. And it's a high pay. It's a very highly paid skill. Um, I could sell personal development stuff or marketing business stuff. If the internet was unplugged, I suspect the seminar market would blow up. And I'd probably figure out how to do, how to get much better at cell phone list building and direct mail. Mm. Uh, and um, I'd probably create a direct response, public speaking based business where I build my email list whenever I go and speak publicly or my, I guess my, direct mail and cell phone number list is probably what I would do. And then locally run a hypnosis practice in the meantime. I think that's what I would do. That could work for yeah. you. Interesting question, right? Yeah. Interesting question. Cool. Well, um, one way or the other guys, here's, here's what I have to say is if you want to learn how to build a real email list of real people, who really want to hear from you, who you really want to serve and spend the next, like, dude, spend the next 10 years or more having a relationship with and having a positive and profitable financial exchange with, then we'd love to talk to you about building your email list. All you have to do is go to mascotland.com slash early bird to get on our early bird email list put in your name and your email address because the internet is not unplugged. And um, on the next page, you'll see a very short letter that tells you a little bit about what we're up to with uh, working with folks to teach people like you email list building. And uh, you can book a call right now. Um, I have a few spots available for the rest of the week. And uh, as of right now, I will be the person you talk to. So at some point down the road, you might talk to Brian or someone else, but right now I'm talking with everyone. Um, so if you're serious about building your email list, you want to do it the right way. You're tired of like biz op MLM mega scams. Um, then I would love to teach you how to do it the right way. And, and really from the heart. So you can do it in an authentic, meaningful, connected and profitable way. That's, that's the only way that we teach. So if that sounds interesting to you, Go on over there. If it doesn't sound interesting to you, you know, whatever. Give us a um, shout out in the comments below. I'd love to know what market or niche you are in, in your business. We probably should have led, left with that. What market or niche yeah. are you in? All right. I think we're good to go, Brian. All right. We will see everybody in the next live stream. Tomorrow. All right. Over and out. Ooh.